Monday, everyone. John Lorden here with a brand new episode of Brain Scratch Case Cracked. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Christy Arnhart has been hard at work on another case for us to check out. This is one that I like to call Catfish in Law. Let's get started. Laura and Richard Avoncik were married and lived a happy life in Lakewood, Ohio. As all marriages have, there were some specific challenges. Unfortunately, Laura and Richard could not have children of their own. Richard did have several children from his first marriage, and he and Laura decided that to expand their new family, they would become foster parents. Richard's oldest son from his first marriage, Richard Avoncik Jr., recalls that he couldn't even tell you how many kids they fostered. During their time as foster parents, the couple also adopted two young children, a boy named Nicholas and a little girl named Jamie. As the children got older, they both began to display behavioral problems. Nicholas was able to see his way out of those trying times, but Jamie seemed to never get over some of those early issues. Time passed, and in early 2016, Jamie met a young man named Shelby Svensson. Shelby was friends with Nicholas at the time and was always hanging out at the Avantic household. Shelby would frequently get kicked out of the house back when he was a teenager by his mother. He was homeless through most of his high school years, living in cars and sleeping on couches. Shelby also had behavioral problems of his own, and he would also sometimes go by the alias of Shelby Neely. Jamie and Shelby got married in their early 20s in Palm Beach County in November of 2017. By that time, Shelby was no longer friends with his wife's brother. Nicholas didn't like the way that Shelby treated his sister, and he thought that she could do better. Shelby seemed to bring out the worst in Jamie with his very aggressive and controlling ways. In the early years of their marriage, the couple bounced around Florida and Ohio. Her uncle, James Androsky, a former police chief in Ohio, said he knew little of Shelby other than he had spent time in and out of psychiatric care and that Shelby had a criminal record. He was always kind of a mysterious kind of kid, Zendrosky said. You never really could pin him down. Both families now lived in Florida. Laura and Richard lived in a retirement community just outside of Tampa called Tarpon Springs, and Jamie and her family lived in nearby Port Ritchie. Things between Jamie and Shelby always seemed to be tense, and by the start of 2018, the young family now had two children of their own, and had decided to make a new start and move abruptly from their home in Port Ritchie to Texas. During this time, Jamie seemed to grow distant from her family. Although photos of the children and text messages came through regularly, the family hadn't actually spoken to Jamie since their move. After almost a year, the family started to demand that Shelby let them talk to Jamie. Suspicion grew, but they made no progress in hearing directly from their daughter. By December 2018, neighbors and family began to worry about Richard and Laura Avoncik. No one could reach them by phone, and their neighbors began to complain. It seemed that an odd smell was coming from the mobile home. The couple's air conditioning was running 24 hours a day, even in the middle of winter, and a young man with a toddler had been observed in the family's front yard late at night. He seemed to be digging a trench. After a few nights, the man and child left, but the Avoncics were still unreachable. On New Year's Day, Richard Jr. had called from Ohio and asked the local police to conduct a welfare check at their Tarpon Springs home. While entering through an unlocked sliding door, officers were greeted with a gruesome sight. Covered by area rugs in a back bedroom were the bodies of 71-year-old Richard, 59-year-old Laura, and their 25-year-old son, Nicholas. Not far from them were the bodies of the family's three small breed dogs, Buddy, Boomer, and Bailey, all in a state of advanced decomposition. It was then that Richard Jr. began to wonder where exactly was his sister and her two children. While police began to search the grounds of Jamie's former Port Ritchie home, they didn't know that Shelby had returned to his native Ohio just before Christmas 
where friends say he showed up driving an SUV they'd never seen before. He was also flashing a lot of cash and jewelry. The 25-year-old acted invincible, they said. He called himself God and Sugar Daddy. He told friends that he inherited $25,000 and wanted to settle down in Lakewood, Ohio with his two young children and, quote, live it up. He put down a year's rent on a house, signing the lease on December 24th. He went to Walmart every day and came back with TVs, PlayStations, appliances, and workout equipment. Yet another friend was told by Shelby that after spending time in a psych ward, Jamie had killed herself, leaving him single to raise their kids alone. His friends also noted they saw the single dad treat his two young children in a very abusive manner. He would yank them around, and when they would resist and rebel, as small children sometimes do, he would yell at them and scream directly into their faces. Investigators eventually tracked Shelby to Lakewood, Ohio. He was arrested on January 3, 2019, while driving Laura Avancic's stolen SUV. He also had his two children, ages two and three, with him. While in custody, Shelby confessed to the murders. But it wasn't the murders of the Avancics that stunned police so much as his confession to also killing his wife a year before. He said he killed Jamie in Port Ritchie in January of 2018 and buried her body in their yard. He then managed to fool her family into thinking she was alive for the rest of the year. At this point, it would appear he was able to just trick them into thinking she was unavailable or she was somewhere else, said Pasco County Sheriff's Colonel Jeff Harrington. This is a situation where you have somebody who engaged in horrific criminal activity. As pressure from the family built throughout the year, Shelby feared his scheme was about to unravel. So in December, he left Texas and headed to their Tarpon Springs home with the intent of killing the Avancic family. He started slowly, ambushing family members one at a time. He allegedly killed Richard with a hammer on December 15th. His wife, Laura, met the same fate upon arriving home later that day. Nicholas was killed also with a hammer as he slept. Shelby then used the same hammer to kill the family's three dogs. While the bodies of his in-laws laid in another room, Shelby stayed at the house. Investigators say he ordered pizza and had it delivered to the home a week after the murders. He was also captured on surveillance video at a Home Depot buying paint and other supplies, one of his paint-covered shirts was found in the home's washing machine. Some of the Avancic family's jewelry had also been sold at a local pawn shop where Shelby had provided his fingerprint for the sale. Jamie died from, quote, violent blunt force trauma, possibly in much the same way as her family. Jamie's biological sister, Karma Stewart, says detectives told her she was likely one of the last people to have a conversation with Jamie. The two had FaceTimed on January 25th, 2018. She says her sister told her that she planned to leave her husband and take the kids somewhere where he couldn't find them. I felt I feel betrayed and that I was played, Stewart said. I didn't expect the worst when I probably should have. Karma Stewart says Jamie was a loving and caring person, particularly toward her children. But Stewart said she could also be strong-willed while Shelby was controlling. Jamie told her that she and her husband frequently got into fights, but never described it as abuse. But Stewart said Jamie also showed her photos of bruises. Ohio police records show that husband and wife were both arrested on charges of domestic violence, each accused of assaulting the other. I tried to convince her a couple times that she would be better off leaving him, just being a single mom with the support of her family, Stewart said but I don't think she ever considered it an option. Shelby Svensson has now been extradited back to Florida. Police have not revealed a motive in the senseless killing of Jamie and her family. Prosecutors have declared their intention to seek the death penalty for Svensson. The Pinellas Pasco State Attorney's Office in Florida have not yet decided whether to pursue a death sentence in his wife's murder case. He remains in jail, held without bail, and awaiting trial. The couple's two children are in foster care in Ohio. Family members hope to adopt both. Case cracked. Wow, 
um, these are really tough situations whenever we're talking about domestic violence of this nature. Uh, and the really sad thing for me in this is the children. The children lose their mother, the children lose their grandparents, and then ultimately now the children have also lost their father, though some of us may wonder if that's actually a bad thing or not. But ultimately, the whole world that these kids had just got completely wiped out by this guy. And I just, I think that's terrible. I mean, how hard is this life as it is, even when you have good support and good family structure and people you can reach out to when you need help of any kind. And those people were just being picked off one after the other. Um, on top of that, you've also have these kids losing an uncle. It's just, it's really um, such a, a tragic, tragic story. And I guess the only thing I could hope for is that there is another Richard and Laura out there uh, that are fostering children that are taking care of these two children. And hopefully some of the remaining family is able to actually adopt them um, and show them all that support that all of us need as we're trying to get through this life. Uh, I also really thought about the aspect of essentially catfishing the in-laws like that. What a weird, twisted thing to be doing and just what a bizarre responsibility to put on yourself. I mean, did he keep her cell phone active through all that? And when people are texting her or trying to message her, is he replying through that and, you know, just keeping it short and sending pictures of the kids? It's just there's this whole strange aspect to the fact that he tried to manipulate everyone into thinking that Jamie was still alive after she wasn't. And also what we see here is kind of typical for what we hear from um, serial killers. There is a very steep escalation pattern that happens here. Uh, we have him start by killing one person and then all of a sudden he goes on a rampage and he kills three more and their pets. So um, I'm just I'm thankful that it stops at this point because who knows how far this, this could have gone. I mean, this is just within a few years that this guy did this. So it's, um, I'm thankful the investigators were able to pin this down. I'll be curious to see how the trials go. Uh, I'm assuming, I, I really don't know what the possibility of the death penalty is in this, but I'm assuming that at a minimum, he's spending the rest of his life in prison. If we get any strange updates or there's any bizarre turns in the court case, of course, we will keep you updated here on the channel. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of Case Cracked. I appreciate each and every one of you out there that supports the channel and the work that we do here. Speaking of which, before we end, I need to thank some new patrons. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Crystal Heckman. Thank you, Desiree Bo. Hope I'm saying that right. Thank you, Irene Vasquez. And thank you, Catherine Gale, for supporting me, keeping me here, doing what I love doing, getting to spend time with you. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you back here on Wednesday with a brand new episode of Searchlight.